Hello, wherever you're at around the world, I just wanted to come to you via social media and give you some good news, some hope in this time of crisis. With the pandemic, the virus is all around the world, many people are looking for hope and wondering where is God in the middle of all this. So I want to share something with you today that's going to give you hope and let you know what God thinks of you. Right where you're at, no matter where this message is reaching you, this is a message from God to you. In John the third chapter, in the, in the Word of God, the Bible, John the third chapter, verse 16, the Bible says, For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in Him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For God sent not His Son into the world to condemn the world, but through the world, but that through that, but that the world through him might be saved. God give his best to you and I. When you love someone, you give your best. You give everything you, you can. And the best he could do was to send Jesus Christ, his son. And when he came, Jesus Christ came, he hung on a cross, he shed his blood for you and I, that we may have forgiveness of sins. The Bible says without the shedding of blood, there's no remissions of sin. So we were separated from God, a holy God, a almighty God, powerful God. And we, we, we were separated him by our sins. But God sent his son Christ to die on a cross so he could make the payment for our sins. Because sin costs. Sin costs something. The Bible says the wages of sin is death. But the gift of God is eternal life through his son Jesus Christ. Now when God sent Christ to die for our sins, he also rose him up the third day. When Jesus hung on that cross, he had you on his mind. Wherever you're at today, he had me on his mind. Over 2,000 years ago, when he hung on that cross, you and I were on his mind. He came and died for you and I. But he also rose again the third day for you and me. God the Father rose him up and from the grave. And now he's seated on the right hand of glory with God in heaven. And some more good news, he's coming back. He says he's coming back for his children. And we know that toward the times when he's, he's about to return, the Bible says there's going to be pestilence and disease, all kind of sufferings around the world. Many people are going to be anxious, hearts failing men for fear. All kind of things will be going on at the end times. But the Bible says that we are to look up for our redemption is drawing nigh. Christ is coming back. And so my question for you is today, wherever you're at, whatever you're facing, whatever's going on in your life personally, do you know Jesus Christ as your personal Savior. God the Father sent Him so you can have forgiveness of your sins, so you can have assurance that you'll go to heaven, and so that right where you're at that you would know that the Spirit of God lives within you. God loves you so much that He wants you to be His child. He wants you to be His, his son, His daughter. The Bible says, But as many as received Him, to them gave He the power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on His name, which were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. We have to be born again. We're born into this world. Wherever you're born at, all around the world, people are being born and people are dying. But we must be born again spiritually. And that's why God sent His Son, that we can be born again spiritually, that we can have a new life. We don't have to have, live with the past mistakes, with all the sins in our lives. God wants to forgive your sins. He wants to forgive your mistakes. He wants to set you right with Him. He wants you to be His child. The Bible says that it, therefore if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things become new. The Bible says God was in Christ reconciling the world unto Himself. So God did it all for you and I. He sent Jesus for you and me. Jesus died on the cross. His blood was shed to pay for our sins. And he rose again the third day, all for you and me because of one reason and one reason only, because God loves you. God loves you. Don't you ever think that God doesn't love you. Don't you ever think that God doesn't want to, is not interested in you and is not paying attention to what's going on in your life. God loves you with an everlasting love. And he sent Christ to die for us as a demonstration of his love. When we look at Jesus hanging on the cross, the only begotten Son of God, we see the love of God expressed in the cross. The Bible says God commended His love toward us, that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. That means when you were doing some of the worst things that you've ever done, God saw it before you ever done it, saw you when you done it, and yet He loves you anyway with an everlasting love. 
I want you to know today, wherever you're at, the hope around the world is not when this crisis will be over. It's not when groceries will start and food will start coming back. It's not when all these other necessities that we need. The most important necessity that you and I have is that our soul, our spirit is right with the Holy God. Because no matter how long we live, the Bible says, appointed unto man once to die and then the judgment. We will stand before this holy God that created the whole world and knows the numbers of hairs on your very head. And we'll stand before him. And there's only one thing that will matter on that day. Do we know Jesus Christ as our personal Savior? Have we received Christ? Have we received the forgiveness of God, the payment for our sins, and been made right with God? The Bible says, For it pleased the Father that in him should all the fullness dwell, and having made peace through the blood of his cross, by him to reconcile all things unto himself. By him, I say, whether they be things on earth or things in heaven. God reconciled us to him through his son, Jesus Christ. Do you have that relationship today? Do you have that relationship with Jesus? Right where you're at. The spirit of God draws you. He draws you to, to, this, to this cross. He draws you to this message, the gospel. And you know that you're lost. You know that you need this. You need a relationship. You want to experience that love of God. You've heard. You believe. But you want to know without a shadow of a doubt that God loves you right where you're at. doesn't matter if you're outside like I am today or in a building, wherever you're at. Simply bow your head and ask God to forgive you of your sins. Ask Him to forgive you. Believe on His Son, Jesus Christ, that died on a cross for you. He died for you. He shed His blood for you. He was buried in your place and mine, and He rose again the third day and is alive today on the right hand of the Father. You believe that. You put your faith in that. You put your faith in Jesus Christ and what he done on the cross for you. And by faith, God will save you. And by faith, you'll be a child of God. The Bible says, for by grace are you saved through faith, that not of yourselves, it's the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. You can't earn it. You can't work hard enough to please God. You can't do enough good deeds to please God. You can't keep the law good enough to please God. The Bible says our righteousness is as filthy rags in the sight of God. God is holy. And God knows that you cannot be perfect. Therefore, he sent his son Christ, who was perfect, to die in our place and to rise again. And we are buried in Christ and we live in Christ if we're his child. So when God looks at me today, because I'm his child, he sees the holiness and righteousness of his son, Jesus Christ. And he sees me as his child. Are you his child today? Again, I implore you, I beg you right where you're at, ask God to forgive you of all your sins. Believe on Jesus Christ and his finished work on the cross and receive him as your personal Savior. I ask you to do one more thing. If right where you're at you sense God's presence and you know God is speaking to your heart and you sense the love of God, great is your sin, you know your, your sins are many, but you also sense that God's love and grace is greater. And it is. The Bible says where sin abounds, grace is much more abounds. Call out to him. Believe on Jesus Christ, the Son of God, for forgiveness of your sins. And then I want you to type in, in your own language, I am just one. And when you type that in, when you post that in the comment, I am just one, then you're making it public. You're letting the world know, whoever's watching, I made a decision for Jesus Christ today. I want everyone to know, I want God to know I'm not ashamed of him. I am just one. Because this video may have been just for you. You may be the only one it's for. I don't know. But I felt compelled to come down here in the woods and to do this, to share the gospel, the good news, the good news of Jesus Christ, that you don't have to be alone, you don't have to be afraid, you don't have to doubt, you don't have to ever wonder. You can know without a shadow of a doubt that God the Father loves you, and wants to live within you with his spirit and you be his child and have fellowship with him through forgiveness of your sins by the shed blood of Jesus Christ. I am just one. Please type that in if you've made that decision today. We want to hear from you. Father in heaven, I thank you, Lord, for this message. I don't know who will watch this or what country it will be in. There are some you have laid on my heart that I know it will go to. Lord, I pray whoever's watching this video, they will sense your presence, sense your power and your spirit. 
through this message. I pray they will sense your love and the great conviction of the Holy Ghost drawing them to the cross, that they'll see themselves as you see them, lost and undone, but they'll also see that you're, they're more valuable than anything they could ever believe or know because of your great love for their soul. And I pray that you would save their soul. I pray that they'd make that decision today to put their faith in Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God. Let the words of our mouths, the meditation of our hearts be acceptable in your sight. O oh Lord, our strength and our redeemer. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you.